Okay. Let's do it. Okay. Oh, he's one of my favorites. I mean, we just about grew up, not grew up, but kind of grew together for the years and the times that we played together. We like knew one another and little tricks that we uh, used to play with one another and, and writing and, uh, you know, so we, we understood and had the same kind of feelings and thoughts about the music that we were creating and uh, very enjoyable. <laughs> well, you know, like the way that I'm playing today, uh, especially when I do my own bandstand, I uh, my, my my rhythm concept, and but I play a little. I play guitar before I play the bass, and the things that I do rhythmically, uh, I got from him. Um, whether it sounds that way or not, but the, the moves. So the things that I do when I play chords, especially when I do my own bandstand, the things that I do or the things that I heard him do or the things that I wish he were there to do, you know. Uh, so as a, as a rhythm player, uh, especially when it comes to rhythm and blues or when it comes to walking, uh, he just said it all. It's the same flavor. It's like uh, we're almost the same person. Like a Cornell, I mean, I play with a lot of great guitar players, but it's like, if I were a guitar player, I would want to play like him, um, especially rhythmically. Uh, I'd never be able to solo like you, bro. I mean, that, that you got that all by yourself. <laughs> but rhythmically, uh, I'm a rhythm kind of guy, and I like rhythm. And all the guitar players that I play with, they don't play the rhythm the way he does. It's like when you listen to an organ player, you play zoom, 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 zoom. <laughs> You hear a rhythm in the right hand. A uh, real organ player. A real organ player. Yeah. A, a real one. Uh, so that that's where I um, I kind of think too that in a way it's a Texas thing mm -hmm. because even the uh, I've been here twenty eight years and I played with just about everybody here and they all want to go that way but of course you got to like everybody smiles everybody's trying to smile that way and things have changed though. To where they don't really play that way anymore. Whereas I used to hear the uh, Mighty Claus and Joy had a guitar player. Me and you were to uh, maybe me and you were together. We heard this bass and guitar player playing. Mm -hmm. It was at a church or something like that, and they were just picking them up and putting a rhythm like a bicycle. Mm -hmm. So like to answer, I mean, I'm very long-winded, which you already know. Uh, but I kind of think that when it comes to guitar players, I think about him more, and I think of the other guitar players that are majestic and great too, but like if I were a guitar player, I would want to play the rhythm with one finger like him. Uh, uh, when I first heard stuff, of course I knew everybody um, uh, personally, socially, and I worked with everybody, except, uh, well, I worked with everybody real, real well. And I thought it was very unique. At that particular time, I was really embedded in doing studio work and was not listening that much to any band. My record collection has always been very small because if I have records, somebody gave it to me. So I wasn't listening to stuff that much, but I do know that they had a good band. Um, I think the only time that I've seen stuff is uh, the video that we talked about uh, a, few, uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, you all are somewhere in Europe or somewhere. That's the only time I've ever really seen stuff live. But I have heard, uh, and that was a long time ago. Was it Switzerland? It could have been Switzerland. Mm -hmm. uh, Montrose. Richard, Gordon, you, and Eric. Switzerland. Montrose, Switzerland, yeah. yeah. In 1971. <clears throat> was that in 71? Mm -hmm. Well, y'all were so good looking and skinny. and Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> In shape. In shape. <laughs> Pocket full of money. Yep. So I think, uh, you know, for me, and specifically answer your question, I mean, like, he's, I sort of came up with him. Because before I got to New York, uh, guitar, I was not, I, I was a guitar player. No, no, I take that back. It was not 1971. It was 1976. 
Okay. Yeah. And I can see because in 1971 there wasn't no stuff banned. No. Mm. Um. Either my vibrator's going on or my phone is going. What's going on over here? Do you have gas? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Nowadays, um, young people aren't taking the time that the, um, I would say, our generation took to know how to play. Right. You, you, you can't sit in your bedroom practicing all day and playing the records. You got to get out and mingle with people that are out of tune, people mm -hmm. that are rude, or people that are really better than what you got in your bedroom. Yeah. And playing in a key that you're not quite familiar with, but you learn how to do it. They don't want to go through all those steps. Mm -mm. Uh, I have been doing quite a few clinics the last two years um, over the U.S. and it, it gets to be very interesting the money that I make telling people something that they should realize just by looking in the mirror or that their father should have told them. Mm -hmm. You know, like you can't be asking me how you want to learn a mode. My first question is what for? <clears throat> because there ain't no mode going to help you play the bass. Mm -hmm. Uh, you, okay, I want to know how to take a solo. What do I do? If you got to ask me, what do you got to do? That's almost asking me, how do I act on this date with this girl across the street? The, you know, the, the, some things you got to do. The the one thing when they ask me, about how do I take a solo? What do you do when take a solo? The first thing in order to take a solo, you got to learn the instrument. Yeah. If you don't know the instrument, you cannot take a solo. Absolutely. You know, you got to have been there. Yeah. To do it. And to been there is where I was headed. Mm -hmm. You got to go up to this club, to that club, to this yeah. jam. Yeah. You got to fall by the wayside. Yeah. You got people laugh, have people laugh at you. Yeah, you got like my Uncle Raymond used to say, the chord is a major seven. Yeah. And when I take my solo, I got to hear major seven. Major else seven. I can't. Yeah. And so by the time he says that to me hard enough and long enough, I the audience is looking, the other band members are looking. Mm -hmm. uh, so now I just, you know, they got to go through that. It, nothing is per perfect. Some things are perfect, but that's after you've already been there for a second, you know. But they do not want to take the time. They think that, they ask me, wow, where did you get the strap? And I tell them, and they say, wow, I want to give me one of those. Then it reminds me of uh, everybody. They think that if they get this strap, they do it. That that's going to help them play like me. <laughs> you know, as opposed to just getting a, sh a shoelace or whatever and play like just having the experience. But this strap don't even help me play, <laughs> you know. Um, or what kind of bass you got. Yeah. Now, I'm going to get the same kind of bass that Stanley got. I'm going to get the same kind of bass that so-and-so got. Mm -hmm. It don't mean a thing at all. I mean, Willie sat down one day and he had in his loft about 30 basses. I picked out four or five that I thought were pretty cool, and I fooled around with it. Sounded one way, same amp, and he would play it. He play it two different people, two mm -hmm. different sounds, two different yeah. everything. The bass, it, it, the bass does help, but it, it's just a matter of calluses, how you your attitude about how you hit it, and they don't. Uh, young people don't. You know, they don't want to take the time. Too much TV. Time is what you got to have with it. Too much TV. You got to, one, one, one way to get by that is to be in love. Well, if they're playing bass and guitar, uh, it, as far as me and him go, we've been knowing each other since 1963. This is 2010. Uh, during that time, at the very, very beginning, we spent a lot of time together. We were roommates uh, at one time in a band. We were like a family. I know his children, you know. I know his wife very well. Um, I know him very well. We know each other. Now, you, let's just take this and put this, leave this here for a second. I also knew, uh, Dave, I know David T. Walker, I knew Eric Gale, but I didn't play as much music with those two guitar players that were great guitar players. We played so much together. It's like with Bernard Purdy. And I played so much with him that there's no way I can escape if I wanted to escape uh, 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 from him. Is that we played so much together that sooner or later, 
it works out. Number one, the universe put us together, and so like we saw the kind of the universe wouldn't have done it if it wasn't going to work, especially at that time when we were really working together all the time. So if my take on that is like, if somebody wants to look at it like that, they get better start spending some time. You know, I'm talking about laughing time, drinking time. Yeah. Uh, uh, some socializing. And also just in playing time. You know, that's the only way. I know what he's going to do. And I would think that you kind of know what I'm going to do. Yeah. Yeah. Witnesses. Yeah.